Welcome back. My name is Darren Thomas and I am the Director of Educational Research Techniques and this is Simpler. We're learning how to make machine learning algorithms using R. And so we're going to continue our journey now with best subset regression. And in the last video in lesson 2.2, we actually made a, a basic multiple regression ordinary least squares model. That's what we did. And so in this video, we're going to uh, use best subset regression for the purpose of selecting variables to make alternative models that may be you know, superior or inferior to what we found with OLS or ordinary least squares regression. So having said that, let's go ahead and go over to R. So we're here inside R and there are several packages that we need to use um, in order to have success here. Let me go ahead and put these here uh, at the top. And so these are the packages that you'll be using, leaps, ekdat, library, etc. The, the data the, the data set fair is already loaded for us, so we don't have to load that again. And what we're going to do now is, is that we're going to actually make our subset models here, if you will. And so in order to do that, we're going to use um, a function called reg subsets. Uh, this is for making the actual different various models that it's going to use. And in order to do that, of course, you're also going to have your, func your, your, your code inside the parentheses here. And this code right here inside the parentheses is just like what you do for uh, regular uh, multiple regression with the LM function. So you can see here we got rate. This is what this is what we want to predict. And then we have a little tilde sign and the dot means use all variables. And then the data set we're using is fair. And we're going to save all this inside an object that we're going to name sub.fit. That's what we're doing. So I press control enter and I'm essentially done with that. Now, one of the things that we have to do that's a little bit different here is that you know, often when we did multiple regression in the past, the next thing we would do is use the summary function to see the results. But because we have slightly different goals for um, our results here, we're going to save this information, then look at it. Because we're going to use this information inside best.summary here for other purposes, as you will see. So I will use the summary function right here. I will look at, I will put all my information for my sub.fit inside that, and I will call it best summary press control enter and now just for illustration purposes we're going to print it out and see what it looks like oh I better make this a little bit bigger a lot bigger so let me do that one more time for you and so you can see the results right here so these are all the results you can see it gives a lot of information here we're just gonna go right down to selection algorithm exhaustive so you can see model one has number of affairs in it then the second model has years of marriage and number of affairs so each time there's an additional variable that is added. That's kind of what's happening here with the output, as you can see right here. And so I just wanted to demonstrate that for 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 you know to, to show you what's happening kind of behind the scenes. Now we're going to get into now the next part, which is our variable selection. There are several different metrics you can use here. So we're going to use um, CP, which I believe stands for um, CP stands for. Let's see here. I believe it stands for uh, Mallow CP is one form of determining which variables are most appropriate to include in your model. And we're also going to use the Bayesian information criterion, which is you know commonly used for other purposes like in structural equation modeling. So to get a look at what variables that we need, we're going to use the plot function twice. Once with best summary and then with the, the sub.fit model that we made earlier. So here's what we're doing, line 8. And so here's the here's the plot right here. Now here's the thing. We made up to eight models because of all the number of variables that we had that were available for the purpose. We had eight independent variables basically. Now what you want is you want the lowest score possible tells you how many um, variables to include. So let me make this a little bit bigger for you. Let's see here. Uh, zoom screen here. Uh, I'll make it a little bit bigger for you. And so you can see that when we have four variables in the model, we have the lowest score. It's kind of like the least amount of error, if you will. That's one way to look at it. Um, and now, but the, the problem that we have right now is, is that we don't know which four variables are giving us this lowest score right here. We have to figure that out. And so in order to do that, we have to go back over here and we're going to use the plot function again. But this time we're going to put inside of the object sub.fit. Now remember, we made sub.fit back here in line three when we when we set up all our models using the reg subsets of function. 
So we go back here to line nine, and for the scale, we're going to put CP. In other words, it's going to tell us which variables which variables are best using the criteria of Mallow CP. So I press Control Enter, and you can see I get this plot right here. Now I'm probably zoomed in too much, so I better zoom out again so that you can see a little bit better. Okay, now here's what's happening. If you look closely, it's kind of weird. Normally, a scale goes the lowest numbers at the bottom, and then up to the top it goes higher. But this one is the opposite. The lowest numbers are at the top when you look at the y-axis. So here's what's happening. If a variable has a black square at the top, it is a variable you might want to consider including in your model for the final analysis. So of course, the intercept is always going to be significant. And so if you look closely here, it looks like age, that's, number, that's one variable. Having children, that's two. Education, that's the third variable. And number of, of affairs is the fourth variable. So now we know which four variables we might want to include in our final model. Age, ch having children, education level, and the number of affairs. That is based on the CP criterion. We're going to do this one more time now, but this time we're going to use the Bayesian information criterion, criteria, if you will, um, um, to do this process one more time because different metrics will give you slightly different pictures of what you might want to do. So we're now over here in line number 11. We're going to use a plot function. We're going to use our best dot summary object again, but this time instead of CP, we're going to use BIC. So take a look at this. And I'll go ahead and zoom in for you a little bit so you can see this a little bit better. And you can see that this time it looks like only three variables is the most appropriate choice. Again, why is it three? Because we're using a slightly different metric. So in general, you could say three, maybe four variables is probably our, um, the best choice in this particular situation. Now, if we go back up, let me zoom out again for you. We're going to now figure out, okay, which three variables do you recommend? And so you can see here that this time we have years of marriage, we have education, and we have number of affairs. So I can tell you right now that at least what they have in common right now is education and number of affairs. They agree on that. But there seems to be a disagreement, let's see here, on years of marriage. Yes, years of marriage and the number of children. So. What do you do? This is where your own background and your own experience and your knowledge of the domain can help you to make the best decision. Should we include children or not? Should we include years of marriage or not? Again, it varies. Um, everyone's going to have a slightly different approach, but what we're trying to do here is we're trying to guide our decision making, not based so much on intuition as in allowing the numbers to speak to us. So in this video, we got a peek at how to actually do a best subset regression analysis. You start up here by you know, using the reg subsets function. You have to save the summary for future purposes, and then you can do the variable selection through looking at plots. After you've done that, you now have insights into how you might want to make your final model, which is what we will do in the next video. So my name is Darren Thomas. I'm the Director of Educational Research Techniques, and this is Simpler. We're learning how to uh, use machine learning algorithms inside R. Thank you. Take care.